Warm greetings to our viewers and welcome back to Bulletin Bites. Latest news on law, tax and business in India for quarter 2, 2023. Most business sectors have seen a positive movement, be it agriculture and allied sector, auto components, automobile, aviation or chemicals, where India has proven itself to be a fast emerging and stable economy. India offers the ideal blend of innovation, talent, financial and renewable resources to help your business thrive. This quarter has been quite interesting with numerous updates. On this note, let's begin our Bulletin Bites for our last quarter. Let's begin with the company law updates. For the purpose of expediating the process of voluntary closing of operations of company, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs MCA, has created a new centralized department named Centre for Processing Accelerated Corporate Exit CPACE, for handling the applications for strike-off of companies. This will be beneficial to stakeholders by providing a hassle-free filing process by ensuring a timely and process-bound removal of their company's names from the register. The setting up of CPACE is part of several measures taken by the MCA towards ease of doing business and ease of exit for companies. The next update is important for the companies who come under the purview of conducting mandatory corporate social responsibility. As per the relevant provisions of Companies Act, such companies shall furnish a report on CSR activities to the registrar as an addendum to the annual returns. However, for the financial year 2022-2023, the reporting of CSR activities shall be done separately on or before 31st of March 2024, after completing the annual returns. Moving on to the next update for companies undergoing or intending to undergo mergers or amalgamations. MCA has introduced new provisions with regards to objections, suggestions or confirmations orders relating to schemes of merger and amalgamation. With this notification, MCA has amended the timelines of receipt of objections from the registrar or official liquidator pursuant to the application made by a company regarding a merger or amalgamation. Moving on to the label updates, the Government of Maharashtra has issued an amendment in the professional tax-related provisions. As per the amendment, male employees earning a monthly salary of INR 7,500 to INR 10,000 shall pay a professional tax of INR 175 a month, beyond which a professional tax of INR 2,500 per annum is payable. Similarly, for women employees earning a monthly salary of INR 25,000 shall pay an yearly professional tax of INR 2,500 per annum. Furthermore, for companies inclined towards obtaining a plot within the MIDC area, the Maharashtra Industrial Development Authority MIDC, has issued guidelines for development on the MIDC plot and obtaining of the building completion certificate. It is now mandatory to obtain building completion certificate after utilizing 20% of floor space index. The production on the plot shall be started only after obtaining the building completion certificate. Now moving on to transfer pricing highlights. There have been some interesting rulings given by various tax tribunals across the country. The topic of intra-group services has always remained a highly litigated transfer pricing issue. In connection with the same, there has been a recent ruling of the Bangalore Tribunal wherein the arm's length price of the service transactions was held to be nil. The said ruling is important for all the companies that usually receive centralized services from their group company but do not maintain documentary evidence in support of the actual receipt of the services. In another ruling of the Kolkata Tribunal on the issue of allowing capacity under utilization adjustment, the tribunal allowed the claim of the taxpayer. Thus, the ruling recognized that in the startup phase, the business operations can be in losses. However, the adjustment for capacity under utilization is required to be allowed for transfer pricing analysis. 
In addition to the above, there has also been an important decision pronounced by the Honorable Supreme Court on the issue of profit attribution to a PE in India. In the said decision, Honorable Supreme Court emphasized that the attribution of profits to a PE is a fact-finding exercise and not a question of law. Thus, the decision recognized the importance of a proper FAR analysis and the actual activities being performed by such PE in India. Dear viewers, we would now inform you about some of the key changes under the Customs and GST regulations. During this quarter, the GST authorities have launched a special drive to detect suspicious or fake GST INs and to conduct requisite verification. Further, amongst other amendments, the notification is issued to lower the limit of applicability of e-invoicing from existing INR 100 million to INR 50 million with effect from 1st of August 2023. On the customs side, the amnesty scheme for settlement of default in export obligation by advance and EPCG authorization holder has been announced wherein substantial reduction in interest liability is offered subject to certain conditions prescribed. Further, new notifications are issued under customs granting the benefit of exemption under advance authorization and EPCG scheme under the new foreign trade policy. Let us now move on to the direct and international tax updates for this quarter. In the area of direct tax, the CBDT has issued several circulars and notifications including on the implementation of TCS, on liberalized remittance scheme and purchase of overseas tour program package, TDS in the context of online gaming, etc. in this quarter. To begin with, Due date to file TDS statements for quarter 1 of financial year 2023-24 in Form 26Q and Form 27Q as well as TCS statement in Form 27EQ are extended by the CBDT until September 30th, 2023. Due dates of all other TDS and TCS statements remain July 31st, 2023 and have not been extended. The CPDT has also notified the e-appeal scheme for prescribing the procedures to be followed in e-appeals filed before authorities. Let us now swiftly move on to some interesting international tax decisions of this quarter. There has been an important decision in respect of taxation of offshore supplies in the hands of non-residents. This is a vexed issue in India. In this context, the Delhi Tribunal concluded that the tax authorities made an error in concluding that there was an artificial split of composite contract and offshore supplies were taxable. The Delhi Tribunal adopted a pragmatic view that although the ultimate responsibility of execution remained with the overseas entity in such large-scale turnkey contracts, such a commercial arrangement was to safeguard rights of the Indian customer so that successful commissioning of the project takes place and the project is not abundant. Moving on to our accounting updates. In the era of digitalization and electronic books, it is very imperative that the controls are effectively placed. To have a control on such electronic based data and its related compliances, there are regular amendments notifications from the Indian government. In a recent requirement, the authorities have specified that companies would be required to make sure that the books of accounts and other documents when kept in an electronic mode are always accessible in India. Further, the companies must maintain backups of their electronic books of accounts and relevant books and papers in an electronic mode on servers physically located in India on a daily basis, even in cases where such backups are maintained at a place outside India. Certain disclosures are also mandated for service providers outside India. It is pertinent to note that these requirements are likely to increase the compliance cost of maintaining backups in India, especially for companies that use different ERPs which are on the centralized servers maintained outside India. 
Furthermore, maintaining audit trail feature in the accounting software is also mandated. Dear viewers, with this we would like to conclude our Bulletin Bytes. As usual, for detailed information, refer to our newsletter and get in touch with us. If you found this bulletin informative, please press the like button, share it with your colleagues and friends. Stay tuned, stay safe and stay updated.